Hi guys, welcome to Off The Path Learning. My name is Lisa. Thank you so much for being here. Today, I'm really excited to show you this mushroom right here. It's one of the most powerful immune boosting mushrooms in the world, and that's the turkey tail, Chinese versicolor. So we're only a couple of days away from the snow covering these lands, but there are still some treasures that you can find in the forest. So turkey tail is one of the first medicinal mushrooms I ever came into contact with and because of what I was going through in that time in my life, it really struck me uh, and I felt a really compelling urge to learn more about what grew in the forest, to learn more about the trees, the plants, the mushrooms. And so Turkey Tail kind of started my journey um, that I'm on right now. But for some reason, it took me a couple of years to really confidently collect Turkey Tail on my own. The identification, even though I struggled with it, is considered uh, pretty easy. So thanks for being here with me. Let's get into it. So. Turkey tail mushroom is going right behind me on this log. This is one of the most powerful medicinal mushrooms out there. It's one of the most common mushrooms in the world. It grows worldwide and it's one of the most well-researched mushrooms. And so I want to do my part to get the word out there about this mushroom. I'm going to re be repeating a lot of the uh, same information that the people before me uh, have given. If you're interested in learning more about turkey tail, I want to mention a couple of sources that were really helpful for me. So number one, I want to mention Adam Harriton from Learn Your Land. I'll be forever thankful to Adam Harriton for uh, the information that he puts out there. I follow both of his courses, the uh, tree identifying course and the mushroom identifying course, and I can't say enough uh, great things about them. So yeah, go ahead and, and check out his channel. I'll link his video on turkey tail right here. I mentioned Adam first because he's had the greatest impact on my personal uh, learning journey, but of course how can I not mention Paul Stamets here? Um, so Paul Stamets I think is probably one of the most uh, famous mushroom guys out there. He's gaining a lot of popularity and uh, that's a good thing and he's doing a lot of great work for, uh, for us. So he gave a TED talk in 2011 where he names four uh, mushrooms that, according to him, are essential for human health. And turkey tail is one of those four mushrooms that he mentions. Um, he kind of famously um, and very emotionally uh, gives a whole lot of credit to turkey tail for curing his elderly mother's stage four breast cancer. And so it's uh, quite a touching scene. I'll link the video to his TED Med talk right here if you're interested in looking at it. I highly recommend that you do. He gives a lot of information and he does that all in a concise 11 minutes. If you're interested, the other three mushrooms that he mentions are amadou and that's a mushroom that's pretty common here. It's a birch polypore and uh, his hat is made out of amadou. Uh, the second mushroom he mentions is agaricon. He's super excited when he mentions this one. But unfortunately, it's a very rare mushroom. It only grows in old growth forests, and so it's now extinct in Europe. And the third mushroom he mentions are cordyceps. Cordyceps are the mushrooms that kind of take over insects' bodies and grow out of their heads. <laughs> of course, Yarrow Willard. I've mentioned Yarrow Willard in my Labrador tea video. He put out a video on uh, turkey tail about six years ago, and, and here's a link to his video. There's also fresh cap mushrooms um, that put out a really extensively researched video on uh, turkey tail. So if you're interested in learning uh, more information about the medicinal benefits of turkey tail, I suggest that you go check out their video and here's the link. Uh, I do want to talk about Christopher Hobbs' book as a resource. Um, his book entitled Medicinal Mushrooms 
goes into a lot of detail on the research conducted and the findings of those studies. Um, he gives dosage information and it's just an all-around great resource to have. So if you haven't checked out his book, I, um, I really recommend that you do. Okay, so let's look at identifying turkey tail. So I think one of the reasons that I struggle to uh, harvest uh, turkey tail on my own is that there are quite a lot of look-alikes. You know, typically with mushroom foraging, you kind of learn the image of the mushroom, you ingrain that image in your head, and you go out in the field and you look for it. But with turkey tail, there are so many different variations because of the coloring. And so that makes it a little difficult, and also the fact that there are so many look-alikes for turkey tail, and they're also just as common, you know, they're they're common mushrooms that grow in the same places as, as turkey tail, sometimes even on the same log. And so I think that was kind of messing me up a little bit. It's not until I really focused on two points uh, that I was able to confidently uh, identify turkey tail and uh, kind of drown out the noise of all the other lookalikes. So let's go over what the turkey tail looks like. So turkey tail grows on all kinds of different trees. It's got concentric uh, zones of colors. It's got a velvety texture to the top. If you don't see it, uh, you might just feel it. It's a really beautiful mushroom, especially if you take a closer look at it. You'll see all those beautiful hues pop out at you. It can vary uh, from blues, greens, reds, they vary highly. But the key to confidently harvesting turkey tail for me is all on the underside of the mushroom. So when the mushroom is fresh, it's got a white underside. So that's gonna be one of the key identifying characteristics. There are a lot of lookalikes, but on the underside, they will not be white. Uh, now, turkey tail, as it gets older, the underside will become uh, more brown, more discolored. Uh, you'll also notice that the mushroom is a little bit drier. So if you look at this one comparatively, it's a lot more brown than this mushroom. Okay, another key feature on the underside of the turkey tail is the sporing surface. So turkey tail is a polypore. That means that it's got tons of tiny pores underneath. They're so closely spaced that to the naked eye, it might just look like a flat uh, underside. But if you look closely, so it, if you have a ma magnifying glass, that's great. You could even use the zoom on your camera phone um, to see the, the pores a little better. Um, so yeah, make sure that you can see these pores and make sure that the underside is white. If you have all of those characteristics, you've got concentric colored uh, zones, you've got the white underside and you've got the, the porous surface, then you've probably got turkey tail. Some of the lookalikes that grow in the same habitat have overlapping growing seasons are the uh, violet tooth polypore. That one's really common here for me. But despite its name, sometimes the mushroom can have no violet on it at all. Sometimes it's fully white. Um, it's a mushroom that, again, has colored concentric zones, but uh, it's going to be a lot more subdued. The colors are going to be more in the like beigeish, brownish, whitish tones. It will sometimes have a purple band on the margin, the edge of the cap, and on the underside you'll often see that purple hue. But the underside generally will be uh, a lot more brown. And so that's how you can tell the difference between the uh, violet toothed polypore and the turkey tail. Also, as the name suggests, the violet tooth polypore is a polypore just like turkey tail, but the pores of this mushroom tend to look more like teeth. So that's another way that you can identify the difference between turkey tail and the violet tooth polypore. They won't always look like teeth, but a lot of the times they do look more like teeth, whereas you'll never really see that on a turkey tail. It'll really just be uh, this like smooth polypore surface. The other look-alike that I want to talk about is aptly named. It's called the false turkey tail. Again, it looks uh, very similar to the turkey tail. It's got colored uh, bands on it. But the key here, again, is going to be looking at the underside. So unlike the turkey tail, 
um, the false turkey tail is a crust fungus and so the underside will be completely smooth it will have no pores and it will not be white like the fresh turkey tails will be so to differentiate between the false turkey tail and the true turkey tail look on the underside if you see a smooth brown underside then that's your false turkey tail if you see a white polypore surface then that's your turkey tail so the fruiting season of this mushroom uh, depends on where you are, obviously, and depends on what field guide you look at. But um, from my research, the fruiting season is about from uh, July to October. I've noticed that in ma my area, it's really common at the end of August and then it continues through uh, early winter. Uh, but it is an annual mushroom and so it'll have its fruiting and then it will start um, decomposing and so once it fruits it's only good for about a month and then after that uh, it'll start degrading so you don't have to go far to find this mushroom it actually grows in the city and um, it grows very abundantly in the forest if you get to a spot with turkey tail that doesn't have that fresh white underside keep looking and you'll you'll probably find what you're looking for turkey tail is a white rot fungus that works at breaking down the lignin in the trees uh, once a tree dies and it's finished its life it uh, contains a lot of good nutrients and so um, the mushrooms work at breaking down all the nutrients that are in the tree in order to give it back to the soil to make way for new growth. Uh, it also breaks down the cellulose and the hemicellulose. They're also great detoxifiers of the land, so they really uh, do a great job at cleaning up an area. They take toxic substances and turn them into inert substances. Um, they also do the same thing for us humans in our bodies. They are great detoxifiers. Uh, they have been shown to be very beneficial to remove uh, radiation within the body. They are great specifically to decongest the, the lungs and the liver. There are numerous studies on this mushroom and its benefit for patients uh, that are in and out of cancer treatment. And while I was redoing my research on this one to prepare for this video, I couldn't help but notice a lot of comments uh, on the YouTube videos that I was watching about people and their own experiences with turkey tail. Um, they were kind of giving their testimonials on how turkey tail saved their life and cured their illness. And so I think it's a really important one to get to know. And so I'm doing my part and um, sharing the information I know so that um, you're motivated to get out there and connect with turkey tail. So once you find your turkey tails, what do you do with them? How can you get the medicinal benefits of this mushroom? So for harvesting, you could just pull them off of the log. If you want to um, make sure that you're not damaging the bark of the tree, then you can cut them. I use these uh, gardening shears. Sharp scissors would work too. But they are tough mushrooms, so you're going to want something pretty sharp. Uh, you do, you're going to want to clean them also once you get them home because they can accumulate quite a lot of dirt in them. So you can either brush them off or easiest just like submerge them in water, shake them up and then pass them through a strainer and then uh, dehydrate them for preservation. They're really easy to dry because they're really thin and so you could use a dehydrator, you could put them out in the sun, you can put them in the oven with the door open at the lowest temperature or you could just air dry them really, they're really easy to dry. Once they're dry, from then on you can preserve them in an airtight container for further use or you can get right into making your medicine. So last year I harvested turkey tail and made my first tincture with it. It was a dual extraction tincture. Uh, I'm running a bit low on that tincture now and so I'm out here collecting more turkey tail to process another tincture. I, I'm going to do another dual extraction, uh, but this time I'm looking forward to using a clean, pure vodka. Um, when I did my first dual ext extraction, because I knew that I was going to be adding water to the alcohol extraction uh, to be able to get both the water-soluble compounds and the alcohol-soluble compounds, 
So the alcohol soluble compounds are the triterpenes and the water soluble compounds are the uh, beta glucans, the polysaccharides. Uh, so because I knew that I was going to be mixing uh, a water extract with an alcohol extract, I wanted to make sure that my alcohol percentage was quite high and so I used the highest proof alcohol I could find which I think was 120 proof, 128 proof. But that meant using a lesser quality alcohol that I, that I would have liked, than I would have liked. And um, it's also not, it had a taste to it, you know? So every time I took a, a bit of that tincture, I really regretted not using vodka because with vodka, like if you get a good vodka, it's pretty much tasteless. And so it's nice to have all your tinctures made with vodka so that you can really differentiate the taste between all the mushrooms and the um, plants that you've used. And so the process for that is going to be grinding up the dry fruiting bodies, getting them into a powder so that I have the most surface area, uh, filling a mason jar uh, full of the, the dry powder with alcohol, shaking that every day and leaving that to sit for at least two weeks, up to six weeks. Once you've passed your desired time for the uh, alcohol extraction, then you're going to strain that and then you're going to use the mark, the leftover material that you've just strained, to do your second extraction, which will be a water extraction. So from the strained material of the alcohol extraction, you're going to add water to that. Then you're going to simmer it and reduce it down to half and add that water extraction to your alcohol extraction to make a dual extraction. But you're going to want to maintain an alcohol percentage of at least 25% so that your tincture lasts and um, doesn't spoil because of bacteria. Another way you could use this um, mushroom, and while I was doing my research, it was a common uh, form uh, to take this mushroom, and that's in capsules. I haven't done that, so I am looking forward to doing that. You can buy your own gel capsules online, and then you just, you know, powdering, drying these and powdering them is easy, and then you just fill the capsules so that you can take uh, this as a supplement. So Paul Stamets, when he talks about his mother taking turkey tail to combat her stage four breast cancer, he gives the dosage of eight capsules a day. She was taking four in the morning and four in the evening. Uh, in uh, Christopher Hobbs's book, Medicinal Mushrooms, he talks about the dosage of this mushroom being up to five grams a day. He says as a tea, you could take uh, up to 20 grams three times daily, but he does mention uh, that he knows some people that take up to 10 grams a day as a general health tonic and also as a cancer pre preventative. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for being here with me. I hope that you learned a lot and I hope that you're motivated to get out there and find turkey tail.